Hi everybody, welcome here. We are uh, Fernando and Alberto, engineers from the innovation team at BBA Bank in Spain. And we are here to share with you our experiences with, uh, with OpenStack in the last uh, three or four years. So we would like to start with a simple question. It's like, um, how many of you are currently uh, using an OpenStack uh, cloud in, in production? Uh, quite a few, yes. And how many of you have already tried to upgrade that uh, uh, live uh, production cloud in, already? Okay, so for the rest of you, that's what it looks like when planning it. As, yeah, really? But yes, that's more like the reality. <laughs> A time-consuming process with lots of things to tune up, to migrate, and to deploy with an even better roadblock plan, right? So we all agree that any immigration process is a painful process, but uh, we cannot imagine a worst-case scenario that the one that involves the whole infrastructure. Let's talk about the infrastructure that brought us in, in past summits. We identified three main pain points in our old deployment. First of all, we had duplicate tools uh, for doing the same task in, in the different layers. We have also a very slow incorporation of new services, new OpenStack services. And we faced a complex, a complex architecture that uh, we knew for sure that uh, it could be simplified. We said, we said uh, in the second point that um, incorporating new services was quite slow. Um, primarily because only a subset of OpenStack services was uh, available uh, by most OpenStack distributions out there. And the flexibility in the reference architecture is not as, uh, it's more limited than what we expected. So we were facing questions like, uh, how could we add dynamically new components of a given OpenStack service uh, in a runtime automatically? We just couldn't. Or how could we deploy um, and automate the network layer uh, if we don't manage the infrastructure? So we, we just couldn't. So we found out that um, we were asking these questions over and over again, and all of this constrained the innovation process within Anayas. Some of these constraints are due to the bureaucracy, but uh, most of them are because of the architecture that we designed three years ago. So what if we could set up an environment where the upgrades were easily deployed in a matter of minutes instead of months? What if we, elastically, we could elastically uh, scale out our platform dynamically to respond to the, the demand smoothly in the same way as our hosted applications do? And what if we, at the same time, we could um, simplify the architecture so we could get rid of legacy applications designed for static environments? From that moment, that become our IAS mission. And the innovation teams were always trying new applications, new ways to, to do the things in, in a better way. But um, uh, we have a, a, a real uh, special mantra here, because in the team we need to, to extensively test any, any new application, and, and the old one, especially, if we want to, to replace it. The idea of this table is to summarize uh, the current deployment we have with a new approach that uh, we were, we were um, uh, trying to test. Let me resume this in, in only three, three main points. First of all, we move from, from, con from virtual machines to containers as the main component for any service. Consequently, we um, get rid of uh, virtual machine management tools and third, uh, we leverage the power of the SDN solutions to the infrastructure layer also. We were quite satisfied uh, with uh, the, all the great OpenStack services that, uh, that you know, uh, but it wasn't fully orchestrated because we deployed in an automatic way uh, our OpenStack services, but we couldn't control the whole life cycle, so we couldn't uh, escalate it or mainly control the, the life cycle. It was reproducible also, uh, thanks to the infrastructure that we have uh, and the approach, um, that, uh, and the, the infrastructure as a code approach that we have from the beginning. But the hardware and networking layer was another history. It's more, more difficult to, to orchestrate that, as you know. 
and it was also somehow portable because everything was uh, in our internal uh, Git repo. But uh, with the newest challenge in our infrastructure, um, we use new technologies to improve the platform to, to reduce the time to get the hardware ready. First of all, because um, just after the hardware provider gets everything connected, we are able to automate everything uh, and uh, from, from, the, from the first moment that the provider gets the, the hardware to, to have this uh, ready as a, as a new rancher host. Um, secondly, using Kubernetes and OpenStack based on containers, we solve the problem with scalability, and the portability, and of course, the, the migration process between releases. And also, we can collaborate directly with the open source community, so we can share our code um, with all the benefits, giving all of what we done uh, to the rest of the world. Let's start from, from the beginning. We are going to, to explain, us, explain you uh, our, our full stack deployment, and we are going to, to start from bottom to the top with the, with the hardware deployment. Some people say that um, a huge amount of time is spent during, uh, in data center duties like cabling, configuring uh, the hardware, and so on. We think that's nothing further from the truth because if you don't have a, um, if you don't have a real, you don't have a real IaaS if you don't deploy your bare metal infrastructure automatically, because you won't be able to respond to your customers' needs. So. We did the infrastructure. Uh, we we had uh, lots of manual steps when deploying the hardware, and now we use two tools called Pixie Core and Waitron to automate this process. Uh, they are very simple tools, but they leverage us to to deploy everything in a matter of minutes uh, in parallel. And and as you will uh, see later, it's, it's really easy to to do it. Everything is templatized in a, using a Jinja-like uh, language. And as I say, this process is launched in parallel, so we can deploy as, as many hosts as we want in, in as less as six minutes. The same time from one to any server. So it only depends on the scalability of the web server we, we use to, to deploy the, the, um, the operating system images. So now Alberto is going to show you how we do this um, we have here um, uh, f uh, five uh, servers. As you can see here, we have um, uh, the servers in the firmware booting process. They are trying to get the IP address. And we only have to do a, a really simple API call to, to the uh, Pixie Core. And here, with this really simple, simple API call, now we have all the five servers in installation mode. We can check it out with uh, with another command with a current. Yes, as you can see here, we have five servers in installation mode. Moving on on the console, they are going to to take their IP address and they are going to to start the installation process. And now we are seeing how uh, the Red Hat installation is 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 continuing. It's starting, and then in about uh, three or four minutes, everything will be ready to be added to a new, as new rancher host. Here in the Pixie Core, we can follow the, the, the first uh, process. OK, we, we will see it later. So let's move on with the presentation. And then uh, after uh, quite a few minutes, we will, we will see that everything has finished uh, correctly. OK, let's move on with the second layer of the, our architecture. We, we have, a, as I said, a, um, a fixed architecture that uh, consisted in a non-orchestration virtual machine uh, manager. We have also a fixed network topology that has uh, difficulty the adoption of new open stack services, especially if that services uh, need to provision a new network. And we have uh, even more fixed uh, network topology with bottlenecks and lack of visibility uh, uh, for, for our, in, in our services and inside the perimeter. So our response to this was to embrace the SDN also for the underlay and provision services using Kubernetes. With the SDN approach, we can leverage the, the power of distributed security and micro segmentation also for our infrastructure apps. Moreover, the automation is easier. Th uh, thank you for, for with the, thanks to the, the APIs 
uh, offered by the SDN provider and rancher and Kubernetes. Everything can be done programmatically and not relying on vendor specific tools and front ends and admin consoles because that's from the past, right? Only this slide was worth a, 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 a talk in the Paris summit three years ago. We presented this network topology with quite a lot of subnets that consisted in a fixed architecture for the underlay. We wanted to evolve this to be more flexible. So we started to think if the SDN could manage also that part of the infrastructure. That was our response to that. As you probably know, overlay networks are commonly used for deploying isolated networks for each tenant in OpenStack. So if we have several projects, none of them, we share the traffic between them if we don't want to. That's what we call, as you know, the, the user overlay. Using an SDN controller also for the underlay level, underlay infrastructure, we can achieve the same functionality also for our infrastructure. So we don't need to provision new networks only for security reasons. Furthermore, we simplify our number of, um, of networks from many tens to only three. The storage network, the data network needed for the overlays, and the SDN management networks. Thanks to the provision as containers of all services, we can deploy even the SDN components as, cont as containers dynamically. We only have to connect these containers of the SDN directly to the physical network using Mac VLAN devices in, in Docker. So we could also migrate or deploy a different container without breaking out the whole infrastructure. Some components of the infrastructure need to be run as a virtual machine. So for that, we deployed, uh, we de developed a, a KVM container that gets automatically the configuration from the, from the container and pushes that uh, automatically to the, to the container. Yeah, at the end, we can manage the, the virtual machines as if they were containers. Indeed, uh, we manage them as containers. Let's take a closer look to our unit of compute. That's the, the Docker host. Our Docker hosts are composed by a minimal Linux distribution with Docker and KVM, that's all. We deploy an open virtual switch component from NUAS network called the VRS key that enables Kubernetes overlay network for the OpenStack components. All containers of the infrastructure are connected to this uh, open virtual switch flavor. For the user plane, we deploy instances inside the Nova container which has a libre services running on it. And here we deploy another VRS, uh, that's the VRS V, from, also from NUAS networks, that gives the connectivity to the end users instances. And now Alberto is going to continue from this uh, level of the infrastructure and will tell us uh, how we deploy the rest of the infrastructure. Alberto? Thanks, Fernando. So uh, with the new approach based on container, uh, we don't need more VM management tool. So just using uh, Kubernetes, we can deploy all the OpenStack services as well as the SDN component from, from NUASH. And however, the Kubernetes uh, cluster installation sometimes could be, could, could be hard if you don't have a container management tool. And the advantage of using Rancher in that case is Rancher could deploy all the OpenStack services and all the Kubernetes components distributed between all hosts you have available in, in, your, in your deployment, in your environment. So if you add new hosts in the future, Rancher will deploy all the components needed to join to the cluster that you have in, in your environment. So Rancher could be seen like a pass because you can deploy your own application just with one click. And um, Rancher Catalog is just a group of templates for Kubernetes, replication controller, and pods that you can import into Rancher, and you can deploy your own application. In our case, as Fernando said before, we have all the OpenStack services based on container and the SDN uh, component from us based on container too, deploying using it. So now, Let's take a look at uh, the process. Uh, first of all, we start with a basic hardware deployment in order to get a Rancher platform when we are going to run our deployment. So once we have all available cluster in the, in the Docker host, as a Docker host into Rancher, 
Kubernetes will be deployed between all hosts you have available in your environment. And after that, using a rancher catalog, we can deploy the SDN component from Nuage based on container. And also, we have another rancher catalog template to deploy all the OpenStack services on top of that. And just to clarify, we don't use a specific host dedicated for the compute services. And for instance, you can get um, end user instances running in KVM in the same Docker host that you are running the client services. Um, but anyway, you can, de you can deploy in a different way. So in our case, it's better this, this scan due to a different um, application that we are running on top of that. Nowadays, uh, as you can imagine, talk about Kubernetes is not necessary, but in our case, we want to share with you our implementation and usage of uh, Kubernetes. Uh, we are using a basic uh, deployment of Kubernetes based on service replication controller and pod. We are not using the new um, deployment Kubernetes, but uh, we are just using the service replication controller and pod. And the time to deploy all the services for OpenStack and SDN uh, solution based um, maybe in comparison with the all approach based on Foreman and Puppet is considerable less. So we need less time to deploy everything. And so due to that, we don't need Puppet or Ansible. Uh, other great functionality that we are using uh, is the Kubernetes CTCD uh, as a configuration database. I mean, using the CTCD for this purpose is a good approach in order to take out the configuration file from your container definition. So the idea is just to build a configuration file for your OpenStack services, doing a merge between the upstream code template files, the sample files, and our needs that is located in, are located in, in the ATCD. So let's, let's be an example to be clear. Um, with the basic deployment in Kubernetes cluster, you can get access to the ATCD from all pods, OK? So due to that, we thought one thing. What happened if we use the ETCD as a configuration database for our environment. OK, so the answer here is that with this scheme, we don't need to, to keep the configuration file inside of the Docker file com uh, definition. And you just get this param from the ETCD. In order to do that, we design it uh, a group of structure inside of the ETCD um, that we are going to explain now. For general purpose, maybe for the environment variable, for other different uh, OpenStack services, we use a, a, a special structure that uh, you can see in, in our case is general MySQL uh, key value, but just for the whole deployment in OpenStack. But in other case, for the configuration files that we are using, we need to separate the key value for different services, because you, you know that, for example, different value like Keystone, Auth, or something like that are very common in different services. So we create another structure that you can see uh, separate in different, in different kind of um, sections. Maybe in that case, we separate type for the controller and compute node, and service, for example, Nova, Glance, and file, Nova Conf, in that case, the section where you are going to introduce your, your, your command or your, your specification for a specific uh, service, and obviously the key value. Actually, with this approach, we don't need to keep all the configuration file inside of the container definition, and we just get access from the ATCD to specify our needs for a specific OpenStack service. So finally, the, the use of Kubernetes, as we said before, is, is a piece of cake. So we are using service replication controller and pod. The service for us is the point of contact for other OpenStack services. The replication controller always uh, are used to keep always the same number of replicas that we need in our environment. And the pods are the minimum components in Kubernetes where the container is running. So now it's time to show you the way of building and deploying our OpenStack services based on container. So in the new approach, we are using the upstream code directly in order to build our OpenStack service in container. So just changing this param, as you can see, for example, op OpenStack release, in our case, we are doing Mitaka. You can build 
the um, distribution for the upstream regarding to this uh, specific release. So if you keep the rest of the Docker file without this param, everything is work. So you can move, you can upgrade up faster in, in order to, to wait for other, other possibilities. And once we have the container uh, built with the right release, we have a, a entry point phase that in our case is the first of all, we need to create the config file getting our params from the ETCD and doing a merge with the upstream configuration files. The second step is to update the database definition scheme. After that, if we're running for the first time a service for OpenStack, we need to import into Keystone our endpoints and obviously create the database in, into Galera. And finally, we can start, uh, sorry, and um, finally, we can start the, um, the OpenStack service. So basically, all tags, as you know, are based in Cola project. But uh, we, we have a custom phase for the ETCD to get our params. That is one of the reasons that we are not using totally this, uh, this project. So once we got more experience working with OpenStack, we wanted to contribute to, to the community. So we found out that the best way to see our changes quickly in the upstream was collaborate, that obviously, with the community. So we have to move just for the innovation team inside of the bank uh, from commercial OpenStack distribution to the upstream in order to be faster doing these kind of things. So using the upstream code and changing just the OpenStack release param, as you can see before, uh, we are able to upgrade faster instead of waiting months for a specific uh, release. So in, for innovation, it's, it's very important to try to be faster doing these kind of things to, to get benefits of that. So obviously, we have an agreement with uh, um, Red Hat, and we are comfortable with uh, Red Hat Enterprise support for the official facing cloud. But in our, in our team, in innovation team, we are improving services which are not covered yet for the agreement. So now we are able to review again the three points of our mission, so at the beginning. Um, with container definition and using the environment parents to force the upstream release, we are able to upgrade faster. And with Kubernetes orchestration layer, we've got a non-supervised scale-out infrastructure. And with Nuage to define both overlays, the infrastructure and the overlay for the end user, we simplify our architecture. So now, Fernando, is the demo time. The demo time. <laughs> so let so me one moment to prepare. Now we are going to see uh, the installation we left in the, in the first uh, part of the presentation. Uh, if you can uh, switch to the, to the control, Alberto. Yeah, oh, of course, of course. Yeah, so, here you are. So. So, you can see here that the five uh, servers that we deployed uh, some minutes ago are they ready. Are ready to, to they are ready with they are with the login, so they are ready to be asked uh, to be added as a new rancher host. Now we are going to see how we deploy a complete OpenStack uh, the cloud uh, from from scratch using Kubernetes and, and Rancher. So uh, first of all, we are going to see that in our infrastructure there are five hosts, five uh, Rancher hosts. Here you are. And then, Alberto? OK, uh, one thing very important here is that Rancher, as, as we said before, uh, deploy a Kubernetes classes distributed between all available hosts that you have in your environment. And as you can see here, we have Kubelet, uh, different container distributed between all hosts you have. So if you want new host, you are able to deploy as, a, as, as the same way the, the Kubernetes cluster. So other thing very important that we mentioned before is the catalog, catalog, okay? So uh, we have here the possibility to import our catalog that is from GitHub, is uh, public. So here we have our repo with the different Kubernetes template to define your OpenStack distribution, OpenStack services. So now we, are, we have the cat catalog here. Okay, so as you can see, we have different components and we can deploy in a separate way, but uh, for the demo, we have an special, um, special all-in-one OpenStack, as uh, Ruben, Ruben here, 
uh, you de develop it yeah, for, for the demo because we, we, it's, it's, we don't have enough time to deploy separately, so we are going to do an all-in-one open stack to, with all services. But it's just a group of different templates for, for the different services. So now the first point to, that we are going to do is to load the ETCD with our needs, okay, to specify our open stack distribution. And this is just a one-off pro, uh, process. And we are going to see our changes loading into the ETCD. Okay, so this is our specification for our OpenStack distribution. So here uh, we have all the configuration that we need to define the OpenStack services like Nova, Glance, etc. Okay, so it's ready. We have the ETCD with all our params, so we are able to deploy uh, the OpenStack. Okay. Okay. We are going to launch. So here you are. Here we have all the OpenStack services that we are deploying now. And this is an orchestrated process, so we take care of all the dependencies. For example, we start uh, deploying first the, uh, the database, then we continue with, with Kingston and so on. Finally, we will have a, a fun all functional uh, Horizon uh, service ready to be, to be used as any, as, as any user. Yeah. So now we are wearing, this is an orchestrate uh, phase that yeah. we start, for example, with Galera. We are deploying now a container for Galera. After that, Rabbit and, you know, Keystone, Glance, different services. And the last one is Nova Compute. So we are waiting in this uh, screen, we are waiting for the old services that they are deploying now. And we have a, a small uh, wait until, until we can continue with, with the horizon. That is the last component. Just to be clear, uh, we don't have any uh, fixed uh, and hardcore uh, IP address. Everything is done uh, dynamically. So uh, this Nova Compute is, is waiting for any other services to be ready, and then uh, it will be installed itself. So um, maybe we have to keep wait. In mind the time, keep in mind the time that we use to deploy the open stack, OK? Because uh, there are people in production environment that you know there is more time. And here, maybe with three, four minutes, we got a, a full OpenStack distribution ready. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Meanwhile, we can recall also that uh, everything is uh, dynamic. So we can uh, deploy this uh, in, uh, in our definition. There is. Uh, one one controller one one pod for Nova Compute, in, but for example, we can deploy just changing a little parameter in our definition in our catalog. We can deploy uh, five instances of Keystone or Swift if we want. So, okay, Fernando. Yes, we are ready. <laughs> no, but uh, keep in mind that there are a lot of services, Keystone, Glance deploying. Yes. So, so. And we, we were waiting for the for so the last one. So now the compute node is deploying. And this is Stalin. This is the debug um, output for the compute node. And I think, Fernando, we are able to, 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 try, the horizon. to try the horizon. I think one minute more, but uh, <laughs> we are going to, wow. to do. My hair no worries. Back. Let's try so it. So let me we have think. To, exactly. We have to, to look for the IP address that Kubernetes has uh, given us to, to the horizon service. I'm pointing out the browser to the to that IP address and again. It's fingers be crossed. Deploying, so it's possible that this uh, take a, a time. But the idea is, for the moment, we we have just one compute node. Yeah. Okay, Fernando. So uh, once we have the exactly login with from Horizon. <laughs> you. But we want more. Okay, yeah, Fernando. we have more. We are more ambitious, <laughs> and we want more to this talk. Okay. How was the phrase? Uh, 
Okay, I, I think yeah. we are going to use a, a script to load the network. Yeah, and so we have a, a complete ready. clean uh, OpenStack environment. So now we are going to create uh, um, a new network, as anyone will do if, we, if uh, they had a, a, a clean OpenStack uh, uh, deployment. And after that, we are going to upload a Cyrus image just to, to show you how we can create a new instance, okay? So we do it uh, from the CLI because it's faster and because we have the, the image in the, in, the, in the infrastructure there. Okay, so now we are going to create a network. Is that right? Okay, so let's move on to the horizon. No, uh, okay, let me, let me create the Cyrus. Oh, sorry. To, to yes. We are uploading the image for the Cyrus. Here we are, yeah. Okay, so now we are able to, to go to, to Horizon to review again. Image. After that, as you know, okay. uh, we will be able to launch a new instance. Let's launch a new instance, um, and then we want to show more, more uh, a even special more yes. surprise to this to this tag. Okay, launch instances. Oh, yeah. Cyrus. Yes, we the select flower, as you know, the flavor, genie. which image, and so on. And after a minute or so, we will have the instance already created in here in our new deployment. Deployed for, for this, so in five minutes ago, as, as you have seen. Okay. Spawning. So that's so. cool enough. That's cool, but it's not cool enough. Yeah. For because us. we can do it better. Yeah. So let's go. And we maybe you can, you can scale. show what we're going to do. Yeah, we're going to scale our Nova Compute to two more. Okay, we are going to have three Nova Compute. And to do that, it's pretty clear that we are going to edit, to edit the, the replicas, the number of replicas in Kubernetes. And we are going to put three more. Sorry. And okay, so as you can see, here we have new compute node more. And in a few seconds, they are available for, okay, this instance is running, okay, and where's the admin? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so hypervisor. So just to be clear, we have just scale in our platform, as you have seen uh, with Rancher. So we switch from only one okay. Nova host to three hosts, and dynamically we have it ready in our OpenStack deployment. So now, so now we are, we are to able to deploy four new instances, and, ha and we will see how each of these new instances is going to be located in, in each of these uh, new uh, Nova servers, Nova Compute servers. Okay. So Alberto now is going to create the, the, the instance there, right? Yeah. So two more. Okay. So it's the same. Flower, tiny. Okay. And the idea is that the scheduler for, for OpenStack distribute all the instances between all, all available hosts. Yes. So once we have the, the, this instance is really here in the list, we will be able to see how uh, in the hypervisor view, we can see how they are uh, okay. divided. Each of one is in, in each uh, new Nova Spawning. Okay, but for the admin project in the hypervisor, they are running. And for the hypervisor, and you can see- Here you are. We have one instance on each Nova compute server. So now I think uh, we need to show the networking part to show you the way, as Fernando is going to be so yes. the, the so way to distribute into the infrastructure layer and the overlay, overlay layer for the end user. So just um, 
we, we want to show you how we control the security using uh, NUAS. Oh, wrong password. Wrong password again. Refresh. Ah, okay, yes. Uh, thanks. Thank uh, you very much. NUAS guy. Yes. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a new release for, for NUAS. Okay, the fourth. Here we okay. are. So here, this is the, the SDN control panel where we can define all the, uh, we can see all the networks and define all the ACLs, all the security related stuff. And here we, we are able to control all the topology in our uh, infrastructure. So, for example, if we can, we can select. Go to network. Uh, to, to yeah, here, here we have, for example, one network for glance and a new overlay network for glance. And here we have uh, the, um, the, um, the container that is, its network is being controlled by, by, by NUAS. So here, if we want, uh, we can define uh, new ACLs uh, no, for. In network. Network up. Yeah, here. Here we have all, all the. Let's network here over there. There you are. Yeah. And here, networks, yes. We can see how all the. Uh, let me see. Yes. Yeah. We, can, we can see here how we have all, all our OpenStack services deployed as containers. And we can. Each of one, each of these are, are in on its, its own network. And we can define. Thanks to the micro segmentation, we can de define how they are uh, communicating with uh, each other. So we can define security uh, rules for each service. Moreover, here we have also uh, the chance to, to, to control the security in the overlay level. So we can control here also how the, um, the user uh, the three, instances yeah are um, communicating with each other. So here we can define ACLs also for the overlay uh, network. So with only one uh, dashboard, we can control the whole security in our, in our whole infrastructure, from the user level to the infrastructure layer. So well, that's all we have to, to show yeah. to you. So Thanks very much for coming. That's our team. We are very proud of, of them because uh, without them, uh, this was only a, an idea uh, six months ago, and we make it uh, happen thanks to, to them. And we want to thank, obviously, uh, Nuas team and Paco, Florian for the work. I put my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank, thank you very, very much. much. Sorry. If anybody has any questions, there's a micro here. And if not, thank you very much for coming. And this is our repo inside of GitHub. So if you want to collaborate with us or contribute for the project, yeah, we, are, we appreciate your help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we have a micro there. There's a micro, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. Uh, really nice presentation. I like it very much. I'm with Nuage. Um, I have a question about Ironic. I saw that you use um, Pix a Pixie Boot service for your bare metal service, but uh, I believe you're not using Ironic. Why, why not? Have you considered it? We wanted uh, simplicity, and we saw this, uh, this uh, Pixie Core uh, software that is very, very small and is very simple to use. And as you have seen, with only uh, one API call, we were able to deploy everything. So maybe Ironic is more, it has more than what we need for, for that. Uh, Ironic is, is cool for users to have uh, not only instances, but uh, bare metal servers to be deployed dynamically. But for our user in the infrastructure, with Pixicore and, and boot config or, or Witron is, is, is good enough. Yeah, another other, other thing very important is that we are from innovation team. And so, as you know, we need to prove different technologies to, to, to be able to, to test. So Pixicore and Witron are, are good for us, uh, but obviously you can use uh, Ironic. So. Okay. Thank you. No more questions? So thank you very much for Thanks. coming here. Thank you.